From Nairobi, Kenya, you're listening to the Kuza Podcast. Brought to you by Kuza.com. What is up? What is up, everybody? Welcome to Kuza Podcast. It is nice to have you today. My name is Mavo Apolino. Pastor Mavo Rev me, Pastor me, as people are complaining about my name. Well, I want to introduce you today to an amazing conversation that we are having, and it's all about gambling, betika, spot pesa, and all those things. Is gambling a sin? We've written a blog, if you can check it out on our website, and this conversation is motor like fire. And most of us who are watching, probably you've gambled before. Four. Now, one of the things that we need to know about gambling is the amount of unnecessary spending that we do. Statistically, and let me just pull this up straight from our, uh, our blog that we wrote. And statistically, we are saying that 77% of Kenyan young adults between the ages of 25 to 34 have gambled in the past and 10% of whom gamble more than once a day. 57% are raised, uh, are said to have gambled at least once. Those ones who are 18 years and above. We don't even have time to talk about the parents who've gambled with their children's school fees and rent and all those things. And interestingly, gambling has been portrayed as a very nice thing with the legends in football coming there and saying, oh, you know, do this and do that and do that. And you find that, uh, you know, if you are if you are, if, if you are guilty of this, uh, Manenos, you know you've spent either some fare at some point or some school money or something that you needed to have put in some use. There's a lot of unnecessary expenditure. Well, well, whether it is necessary or unnecessary, I think you need to decide. But our conversation today is just to bring out what is this thing before the eyes of God and especially for us who are born again. With me today, I have an amazing cast. We have a lady in the house today. So for all the ladies, please, yes, gambling is also a lady's thing. By the way, you sorry I could gamble. I love my name, Dabai Mascara. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, we have Tiffany here. Um, if you saw Tiffany the last time, she is now not just Tiffany, but she is Mrs. Kiari and she is a mother of two. That's a good thing. So you can also uh, drop your questions on marriage and childbearing and we can actually give you an answer. Maybe. All right. So that's Tiffany. And we have uh, my YOLO guy, Matt Elmo, uh, the guy from uh, somewhere in Florida and he's now in Kenya. And we have the almost Florida man in Brazil. By the way, Chef Kirek, when you? Z. Z. All right. So this is the most local as you can get. Vic, <laughs> or we call him Saddam. Thank you, people, for being with me here today. Let us get in, let's engage in this conversation. Now, the first thing I want us to, to probably try and share with our members, the guys who are watching, is what is the difference between gambling and investment? Because some young guys will say, but gambling, me fanya nika by computer. I didn't have a computer, so I, I gambled and I did this and I did that. So what do you guys think? What's the difference between gambling and investment? Hmm. Is there even a difference in that place? All right. I think for me, when I think about the two, mm-hmm. um, I think gambling presents us to deal with a chance that risks not just me, but okay. other people. Right. Investment is just a risk I'm playing on loss for myself. Mm. So that if I invest probably wrongly or if I invest without doing more research in a place that harms me, mm-hmm. it harms me only. Gambling, on the other hand, harms either me and other people or harms other people and benefits me. Mm, okay. Yeah. But do you think what Tiffany is saying is, uh, you know, so Tiffany is saying that if she invests, it only harms her. I think it actually can harm both, maybe the children and the husband. And so. What's your understanding about okay. gambling? And, and maybe we can come to Tiffany to clarify okay. that part of it. What is your gambling and investment? Well, I, I would say when you invest like in a business, for example, uh-huh. um, it, you tend to now want to provide a service or a product mm-hmm. to, to, the, to, to people. Okay. And that's usually for the common good, right? Mm-hmm. You know, a okay. service or a product usually for the common good of everybody mm-hmm. versus, you know, gambling is in order for me to um, have success, many have to lose, mm-hmm. right? A jackpot is just for one person. You know, or if I'm gambling on football, you know, there's many people that have to lose in order for now for there to be a select winner or few winners. Okay. Mm. And so that's not for the common good, Mm. you know, Mm. versus investing is more for, you know, the benefit of of, of the people because they get that service, they get that product that's going to help them somehow in their lives. Now, 
That's a general principle because if I'm a businessman <laughs> selling, I mean, they're going, know, I mean, they're like, drugs they're going, they're going to ask you. I mean, who cares? I mean, it's yeah. your problem. You you put in money and you yeah. get, that's your problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would say that's that's a general statement in terms of you know goods and services of right. providing that service. But like if you're selling pornography or if you're selling drugs or if you're mm. doing you know what I mean something like that or you're you're helping people do euthanasia and kill themselves and I don't think you're doing something for the common good. Okay. You can rationalize anything and come up with an argument for anything. But it's not. It's not for the common good. All right. And another thing I would say is, um, you know, some in most investments, like in a business or something, mm. there's a level of risk you can choose. Mm. Versus with gambling, it's you lose all, or you win all. Okay. There's not a, a level of risk that you <laughs> choose. It's an all or nothing mentality versus investments right. different. Also, to you know. Because of that level of risk that you can choose in an investment, a lot of times you don't lose everything. Sometimes you do, but a lot of times you don't lose everything, but you may lose some. Then you can stop, then try to reinvest in something versus right. gambling, you lose all. Okay. You either win or you lose all. Yeah. Mm. So that's the way it is. So there's a big yeah. difference between um, you know, investing versus gambling. So that, uh, <laughs> um, one uh, gambling. You know, there's like some young guy probably. I, I think uh, this is actually yeah. investing. Yeah, I'm know, investing. I, I, I'm I, investing. I'm that. investing my hundred bob here. Yeah. I, I get ten thousand bob. I I have I deal with <laughs> university students and we like comrade to bet ni fifty bob lunch ni one hundred. What do you do? Mm. Bet. So, um, mm. the risk involved, uh, not even the, the loss. I want to talk about the loss. Mm -hmm. The loss in in, in investing, it's not, you only look at loss and we think about the money. But sometimes when you're investing, you don't lose even when you have suffered financial loss. Mm -hmm. You've gained experience, you've learned through the process. Oh, yeah. Gambling doesn't give you that. Mm -hmm. Gambling doesn't give you an, a, an opportunity mm -hmm. to learn and really think. Because when you gamble and you lose money, it's you don't think about how better will I gamble? You think about, I should gamble more so that okay. I can earn. All right. Because it is it is a matter of chances. And we are, when you're talking about chances, you're talking about probabilities. The more you gamble, therefore, the more the chances for you to win, mm. you get. But in business, it's not the more you put in business. The, in business, is how have I, so, uh, what were my sales? What is my margin? Uh, where is my marketing place? Where should I locate my business? How should would I improve my product or my service? Mm. So you're learning uh, what to do best with your business. All so right. maybe, yes, you have lost financially, yeah. but it doesn't mean you have lost entirely. Okay. You have an opportunity now to sit down and think through. Now, a good entrepreneur will look at the loss, financial loss and think through the business on what they can improve. Mm. And that is a learning process that gambling doesn't give. Mm. So mm. gambling and uh, b uh, business or investment is really, really different. But maybe to, just to play devil's advocate a little mm -hmm. bit, somebody may say, well, I still learn how to bet better. You know, in the sense of maybe I should have studied some more statistics on football. I should have looked at, you know, the, the ratio of possession, you know, or the, the number of goals or whatever. So, and I agree with what you're saying, but I think a key thing is, again, going back to what Tiffany said, uh -huh. generally speaking, uh -huh. you know, the, when you invest in a business, uh -huh. the person who really loses is just a, a very, it's just me and potentially my family, right? But... <laughs> <laughs> but when you gamble, it's not you. Yes, you. For, in order for you to win, many have to lose. Okay. And there's families, so many families that are that are put and and so and it's again it's a it's a it's a you win everything or you lose everything. Like a jungle for, rule, survival for the fittest. Yeah, exactly. Whereas yeah. investing, I think, is much better because it's more. Yes, of course, you you may take a risk for you and your family, but it's a calculated risk. It's not generally speaking, it's not a win all or lose all okay. type mentality. Mm -hmm. So I think there's definitely a difference between those two. All right. Risk is there. You can't avoid risk in life. Just because there's risk doesn't necessarily make gambling sinful or even investing sinfully. I mean sinful but instead it's the are you exploiting people Ex and it's more in particular the poor all right yeah Quite and then yes, in, in gambling uh, there, uh -huh. so uh -huh. there are three uh -huh. players uh -huh. there is a loser 
uh-huh. there is a person who wins the gambling Jackpot. bet, uh-huh. and then there is the gambling house. Uh-huh. Uh So whichever, whatever the house is, the house never loses. Mm. That is the so. that is the line behind gambling and right. casinos and everything. Sport, sp- sp- sport pesa, they are, they sport always make pesa, money. Betika, betika, they will betika, they always make money, money. They, they and they always. make crazy money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay. uh, this is how the house plays. They pull money from people. The house doesn't have money. Mm. You don't win that money from Betika. You win it from others who have lost. Mm. So it pulls pulls the money in in one basket and then. They take give, their share. Give like ten percent to the winner <laughs> or the winners, and then they remain with the rest. Okay. That's 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 staggery, man. I mean, that's uh, that is not. Tiffany, you wanted to say something. Oh yeah. So I I just thought of another difference on gambling and an investment. And it's very interesting that you brought up the house in play, because I'm just thinking in investment. Um, when he mentioned about. Uh, skill and growing Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking in investment there's also people who you're investing in and investing with their skills are also growing so it's beneficial for a mass Mm -hmm. in gambling um, even if there's okay we could argue you would learn to gamble better how the people who've lost um apart from you mm-hmm. and the person who's won what skill what what are they adding on to themselves how are they growing okay. so that now we see oh yeah for sure the house will take much so they are growing maybe mm-hmm. but what about the loser and the winner right yeah okay all right quite interesting now um for those of us who are watching tafadali please be mindful of uh, this thing send us a message right there uh, as you're watching send us a message about uh, your thoughts about what you're talking about today have you ever gambled before what is your biggest win what's your biggest loss what are your thoughts about it because right about now we're just about to go into the conversation ask is it really sinful what does the bible say about it and especially for us who are born again um what does the word of god say about this thing mm-hmm. for you who is interacting with us for the very first time please go to your phone go into your app store download the kuza app and check us out at www.kuzaapp.com for much more of this kind of conversation and amazing amazing god exalting christ-centered materials now big question is is it really a sinful thing to gamble mm. The word gambling, obviously, obviously is not in the scriptures, right? Mm-hmm. And so somebody will say, well, it's not explicitly said in the Bible. Okay. So therefore, Akuna Shida. Akuna Shida. But there's a lot of things that aren't explicitly said in the Bible. For example? Like, for example, the word transgenderism is not in the Bible. Uh-huh. You know, the you know, smoking bong uh-huh. is not specifically mentioned in the Bible. Uh-huh. Ndukulu. The, the word ndukulu you know, is not the, in the, the Bible. The, yeah, there's yeah. other things like the Trinity is not specifically in the Bible. Uh-huh. Another thing that might shock you, Jesus himself never said the word grace. No. Uh-huh. In, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the four Gospels. Never. However, I would say... It's implicitly in there. It's well, there. Wait, 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 wait. I think the Bible says that he was full of grace. <laughs> yes, I mean, he was full of grace, full and, of truth. grace and truth. Exactly. So. But now, you know, but I, I'm just saying there, there's things that are not specifically there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the Bible does not say that you need to take a shower every day. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But then again, like going back to the grace thing real quick. For, <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Do you? Do you? Yeah. Nobody yeah. takes a shower every day. <laughs> Some people do. I, you've yeah. never missed a day. Oh, yeah. 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 Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we, are we, are we need to change the conversation cleanness. of the day to day to. Are we gambling with cleanliness? Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, going back to the grace thing real quick. This is a point of reference. Obviously, the way Jesus handles the woman caught in adultery is it is his grace mm. that he's he's living it out right. Mm. All right, so is gambling sinful? Um. There's two major motivations, I think, that are in gambling. Mm -hmm. One is I I gamble because I want more money, right? right? Mm -hmm. Another major motivation is I gamble because, not because I necessarily want more money, I just like the action. I want more action. Action in the sense of the thrill, the desire, the excitement, the you know, the anticipation, like that feeling, you know, that unesquia. Mm-hmm. So those are the two major motivations for gambling. So let's go focus on the more money part. Mm-hmm. If your desire is for more money, then most likely a few things come into play. Mm-hmm. Most of your motivations for more, more money are, are, are involved in greed mm-hmm. or 
coveting, like mm-hmm. in the sense of I desire to have it. I delight to have it in the sense of coveting. Mm. And so those are two major things that are definitely involved, you know, in, in the desire for, you know, for more money. Okay. And obviously, you know, the scripture tells us that greed, you know, is taking advantage of others. Mm-hmm. Right? I want I want to I want this. I got to have this. Even if I have to come on a finium when getting an attack. Right. Right. And okay. so, you know, Ephesians 4, 19, 1 Corinthians 6, 10 specifically lists greed as sin, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, coveting, um, you know, delighting or desire to have something that you don't personally own, but you just want it. I want right. that jackpot. I want, you know, that 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 money that will come mm-hmm. with these things. Okay. Exodus 20, 17, Luke 12, 15, Romans 13, 9. These are all things that specifically name coveting as mm-hmm. um as a desire, you know, as a, as a, as a sinful desire. Mm. And so, and I think another general principle of this, just wanting more money, like I want to get money. Sasa, mimi na choko kukua maskini. Proverbs 28, verse 20 says, A faithful man will be richly blessed, mm. but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Mm. Okay. So that's just a good general, you know, wisdom principle as we go through this. And I think it's important for us to, to consider and think about these things of what's your motivation. Mm. And so, yeah, gambling is not specifically listed as a sin in the Bible. However, in order for you to do to gamble without any sin, you got to you got can you truly in your heart of hearts jump that hurdle of I've not been greedy mm. or jump that hurdle of not been covetous mm. or in the more action thing of I need to have this desire, can you say that you've had total self-control mm. in your life? Mm. But why do I say it's a hobby? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and so <laughs> people may say certain things like that, but yeah. I think you need to really look down All into right. there. All I right. would say I don't see how you can gamble and not violate um, some of these clear biblical principles of greed, gambling, and, and keeping self-control mm. for action. Um, there's a few guys. What 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 are your thoughts about you, Tiffany? I think um, adding on to the violation of Christian principles, uh-huh. um, I think when I think about gambling for now, a Christian. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking as a Christian, I'm gambling. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about. Um, Romans fourteen twenty one, where Paul says it's not good to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes a brother to stumble. And okay. I'm thinking, one, um, for a Christian who's married, if my spouse is uncomfortable with me betting and I am convinced it's not a sin, but my spouse is convinced otherwise, I am leading him or her to okay him him. If you're a what, man, what, you're what, leading what, this. What, 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 what if they are okay with it? So I'm, I'm getting that. Okay. So I'm leading that person to stumble All really, right. and I'm not being loving mm-hmm. to my spouse right. because of that space. Okay. Um, I'm thinking also as a Christian in the space of other Christians who are probably struggling. So probably I'm doing well financially. Okay. Others are not doing well. Uh-huh. And so they're looking to grow, to provide, you know? And so I I bet mm-hmm. I win mm-hmm. or I gamble and I win. Mm-hmm. And they're thinking, so because I don't have a job and my family needs a constant provision, mm-hmm. maybe I can get into the gambling space mm-hmm. and it will be beneficial because I will earn and then I will continually have more to provide for my family. Okay. I'm leading that Christian to stumble because they are not now turning to Christ for the provision of that family. Mm. They are turning to other means that Christ has not even provided for us. When God created work, he, or rather when he called us to work before sin, it was really be- because he called Adam and Eve to have dominion over plants and animals. Mm -hmm. After sin, um, the word laborious, (laughs) um, Mm. work looked tedious, but it was still for our sustainability. So for us to be, to get food on the table, God has called us to work, but we live in a time, in times where work is not available to all. Okay. But then he's still calling us to look to him for sustenance. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, anything you want to jump because I want yeah. us to go to the next thing. Sit down. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Gambling is can be a sin. Can be. You know. Yeah. You are using your word. Uh, or may be a sin yeah. because of <laughs> this. Uh-huh. Uh, how God has called you to use money or okay. the resources that He has given you. All right. It's called stewardship. 
Uh-huh. So um, he has given you money uh, and you're using it wrongly. Mm-hmm. It is him you will answer to. Okay. Because uh, other people, God hasn't given everyone the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. Okay. As uh, Tiffany is saying, some mm-hmm. of us have a lot of money, some of us don't. Mm-hmm. And so if you're using it wrongly and your brother is or your neighbor somewhere is sleeping hungry, and then you're going to bet a K. Mm. Uh, mm. Is that a good use of your money? Mm. Uh, tomorrow you say, ah, I, didn't, I don't have money for food. And yesterday you spent 500 shillings on gambling. Mm. Right. Uh, okay. You see. Mm. So, so your stewardship is a very important thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, another thing that I think uh, makes gambling a sin is uh, the distrust or the focus that gambling uh takes us away from God. Mm-hmm. So we do not trust God's providence yeah. in our life. So we, we trust in our means. Uh, and then we trust in the bet- betting and in the chances. Mm-hmm. God has, pro- uh, has proven to be a provider for us mm-hmm. all through. And, and so when you are gambling, you are basically telling God, I have a better way mm-hmm. that I know you do not agree with it, but it will provide for me. Yeah. And so I'll mm-hmm. go for that. Mm-hmm. It's a distress. And uh, we have these two, stewardship and God's sovereignty, mm-hmm. uh, with with an example of David when he wanted to provide material for building the, the, temp. the temple. He right. was a good steward because he saved. Mm-hmm. He would go for raids. He, he was a king. He saved a lot. And then he thanked God for it. And when he was praying, uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, mm-hmm. verses 12, I'll just read it for you. And you want to see how David's heart is, that both riches and honor comes from you, mm-hmm. and you rule over all. Mm-hmm. In your hands are power and might, and in your hand it, 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 it is to make great and to give strength to all. Mm-hmm. Right. And now we thank you, our God, and praise you, glorious, mm-hmm. your glorious name. But who am I? And... What is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly? Mm. For all things come from from you, and of you, of your own, have we given you. Mm. For we are strangers before you, and so us as all our fathers were. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no, no one abiding. So basically David is saying, even these things that I have saved, <laughs> Nizako, yeah. you gave me. Mm-hmm. Now we are giving to you, and they are giving willingly to the work of the Lord of building the temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, so such kind of a heart that he was a good steward of what gave him, and he trusted God with everything that God gave him, so that God would provide for the temple mm-hmm. and at the same time help him to save much. Right. I like right. something that you mentioned about everything comes from God, mm-hmm. right? And the sense of money and stuff. Mm-hmm. Even Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 says that. Everything belongs to God, Mm -hmm. right? And even silver and gold, everything belongs to the Lord. And he's given it to us in the steward. And it seems like, you know, I can imagine like in a sense that, you know, God gives me this money. I'm like, I'm going to go gamble with this money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and, you know, stimulate my greed and coveting and, you know, and all these things. Just I want to have some action, God. Mm-hmm. And it just seems funny. It's like, you know, imagine it's like someone giving you a car and now you go and do foolish things with that car and hit somebody with it or, you know, go pick up a prostitute or, you know what I mean? Something like that with mm-hmm. that, with the car beba, I've given you. Beba, 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 beba. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm, I'm going to go and, you know, beba mira so people can go get high or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense that you use that car, you know, for those sorts of, you know, bad purposes. Mm, all right, all and right. so, yeah, I just, just something to think about. Mm, I think the other thing that, uh, yeah. that comes to mind is the, the reality that gambling as well has a way of... Um, messing up with our contentment mm. yeah i mean mm. you g- gambling definitely definitely downplays the whole thought of godliness and contentment i think mm. uh, maybe that's a conversation that um we, we want to dive in now as we end a conversation what does the bible say about it because there are many people who are gambling many of us who are watching have probably gambled one way or the other mm-hmm. i mean even among us ourselves i don't know you know there's a time i've ever played the charity sweep stick it's gambling, <laughs> right? So in Tao, I remember they used to have some things there. Yeah, I put a ten bob there and I didn't get anything. I'll, um, I'll admit I I've think. done it. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> what does, Tiffany, what does the Bible say about gambling? What, what What's the contrast or what's the correlation? So speaking of contentment, mm-hmm. um, 1 Timothy 6, 
verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. gain. Uh-huh. For we brought nothing into the world and mm-hmm. we cannot take anything out, out of the world. Mm-hmm. Then down there, verse 9, um, oh, actually verse 8 is important. But if we have food and clothing, with these things, we will be content. Mm-hmm. Then he continues and says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge them mm-hmm. or plunge people into ruin and destruction. For mm-hmm. the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Right. So I'm just thinking, when Paul is talking about if you have food and clothing, Mm-hmm. then you're, you're, okay. you're, you're content, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I mean, you should be content. Oh, yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. You should be content. And then he goes there and says, but those who desires, desire to be rich fall into temptation, into mm-hmm. a snare. Right. I'm just thinking, Paul is not necessarily meaning that it's wrong to desire to be rich. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I don't I, know if... I, I don't think that's what I desire saying. to be rich, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's a, it's a sin for me. It's now that desire, what that desire leads me to do. So if it leads me into gambling, Mm. then it's leading me into a snare Mm -hmm. because I'm not trusting. Desiring to be rich is not bad. I will, I will not be. And it's okay. Mm. If I die poor, because right now I'm a very poor lady. If I die poor. Uh, uh, <laughs> if I die rich, poor. You got, you got twins. Well, you know, oh yeah. Know, right, well, my quiver is full. Your quiver but is <laughs> almost full. Well, let's trust it. We will talk about marriage and children. And so yeah. if I trust in God for his sustenance, even now, and, and believe that, you know, everything is provided is, is good for me. It's enough for me right now, because if I needed more, he would have provided the more I needed, mm. you know, mm. then I will not fall into the snare of thinking, well, with this little I have, let me gamble to, get a bit more yeah uh-huh. so i think that's how i would argue contentment all right um so mm. that i'm not content with the little or the much i have right now right i just desire more maybe because of i've seen other people with more and i want to be like them right or i just want my pride to i want everyone to speak of me as mm. one who has more right yeah okay all right all right um yeah the saddam or uh mm. or Matt, uh, very briefly I'll just go. jump in into my mine is yeah. simple um paul is writing in first corinthians chapter 10 mm. verses 23 <laughs> all things are lawful but I not all things. things are helpful mm. all things are lawful but not all things build up mm. and um yes yeah, someone will say ah in the old testament you have moses <laughs> mm. casting lots for the tribes the tribe that will take the land be, beyond before they cross the river jordan mm-hmm. and then we go ahead we find uh even the in proverbs say the the lots the lots are cast but the decision is from the lord right proverbs mm-hmm. 16. Mm-hmm. uh the disciples casted lots to determine who will be will take the position of uh, Judas. Okay. Uh, so, are there examples in the Bible where somehow there was an idea of chance used? Yes, there were. But they did not fall in the trap of being soaked in by chance. That's why it was easy for those people who won and lost to accept the win and loss mm. because their trust was not in the Lord, but in the Lord who makes the decisions. Mm. And so, God has provided for us everything we need for life and godliness today. We do not have to go and put the resources that he has graciously given us to test when or how he will provide for us. He is a faithful father. And even if the laws of the country say gambling is not wrong, even if in your reading and understanding of the Bible, it doesn't make you feel convicted that gambling is wrong, ask yourself, even if it is lawful, does it build you up? Does it build the society up? Mm-hmm. That is what we are trying to make sure we understand. Right, right. Um, okay. Is it beneficial in any way? Does yeah. it really, even if it is beneficial, 
does it build your spirit your trust in god the more Mm. Those are the questions that I right, would just right. put in place. Something quite briefly, Matt, you want to jump in on that? Gambling and scripture. I wanted to touch on base. Tiffany mentioned about she, she desired she would desire to be rich, but I think that's something that probably needs to be cautioned in, in a sense of yeah. It's, if the, as long as my desire is, yeah, I would like to have more money, is it so that we can be more generous, so that right? We for so we can, yeah, so yeah. we can give, right. give yeah. more, right? Because money is a great temptation to have. For sure. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to live in that. It's difficult to, you know, to continue just to hold and, and to steward that money in wise and, and, you know, in ways. I mean, Solomon is a perfect example, someone who had everything financially that he could ever want, but his heart was easily led astray. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so David, you know, for example, said, you know, I, I don't, he didn't, he didn't want to have too much and he didn't want to have too, too little, but just money. enough. Yeah. And the reason I think that we can be content with just what we have is because if you're a Christian, you have an incredible God mm. that's with you and satisfies your every need. Matthew 13, 44 describes Jesus as the ultimate treasure that you could ever have. Mm. And if you have the ultimate treasure, we can be content. Mm. Right. We can be content. Now, we've just scratched the surface of this conversation and probably um, send in your questions right there. We will be able to respond um, in a way that probably will be a bit more exhaustive. But give or take, we are looking at it from the biblical standpoint. And you're basically saying, as far as scripture is concerned, when this thing called gambling comes in between the things that we are supposed to live by as believers, one, contentment and godliness. And I also, I would conclude that gambling is one of the highest reasons why we have a lazy generation. And in the Bible, laziness is not a bad thing. Laziness is a sin. And so, I mean, it it, it causes us to, to, to be so palpable to other things other than what God has called us do and that is work engage our minds and all those things and so there are many other things there are many other fronts that we can take gambling is a very 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 touchy issue i know yet we need to be able to stand and say this is what the lord says in the word what are the character qualities that god um wants us to uh, to, to produce when the holy spirit is, is at work in us we don't see all these things of greed and and covetousness growing and laziness and 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 just doing things that harm other people so gambling biblically we can boldly say no god does not approve of gambling right saddam does he approve does he approve mm-hmm. nah, nah. Mzungu? I, i'd say it's almost it's impossible basically to it, gamble and, and it, be completely pure in your motives um, okay. mm-hmm. Tiffany. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. so follow us in, a, in, in, in on our youtube please visit us www.kuzaapp.com Dot com uh, for us to get just much more conversation around this. If you've not downloaded the Kuza app, Tafadali, Tafadali, make sure you download it. Thank you so much for all of us who downloaded the app and went through the Easter devotions. That was amazing. Easter season is just about done and look forward to Christmas devotion. I mean, that's the next big thing for us in this Christian calendar. So uh, until that time, this is Tiffany, there's Mzungumutu here, there's Saddam, it's Pastor Me. That name is being, uh, you know, debated upon. We'll debate on elections in August. In the meantime, time please make sure you follow us hit the subscribe button like it this is kuza podcast and until next time to onane badai thank you for listening to the kuza podcast brought to you by kuzaapp.com an online ministry with blogs videos podcasts and a mobile app Make sure to make, make, make sure to subscribe to get more content to help you grow spiritually